Indonesia volunteers deliver daily supplies with help from motorcyclists. Kaohsiung Tzu volunteers have teamed up for facial production in the fight for COVID-19. Welcome to Dad Headlines. I'm Joyce Ho. Thank you for joining us. Today, Indonesia chapter continues to help vulnerable communities during the pandemic. Due to the movement restriction order, Tzu volunteers entrusted motorcyclists to deliver daily supplies to the families in need. Since COVID-19 economic downfall has also affected the motorcyclists, this mission is also helping with their business. Due to the epidemic, Jakarta city, which is usually busy with cars, has become empty. At City Indonesia Chapter's warehouse, volunteers are busy packing supplies. They place rice, cooking oil, sugar, cookies and fabric masks into the paper boxes before pasting the recipient's addresses. During the epidemic, city volunteers continue to help impoverished people. Uh, I hope our daily supplies can help impoverished families get through the epidemic. Due to movement restriction orders, aid recipients cannot come to get supplies. Therefore, volunteers have commissioned motorcyclists to deliver the daily supplies. After the epidemic took place, many people's livelihoods have been affected. Motorcyclists no longer have work. We ask them to help prevent the gathering of people while at the same time allowing them to still have some income. 65-year-old Alice runs a small grocery. Due to the epidemic, there's no business. Zhiji's aid supplies come as timely help for him. I appreciate Zhiji for delivering the supplies to satisfy the needs of my children and I. My heart goes out to this family seeing the way they live. My family's condition is considered decent. I hope Allah blesses his family. Stroke patient Marcel and his wife, who has ovarian cancer, are city care recipients. During the epidemic, volunteers cannot visit them, but they kept them in mind. Thank you, Tzuji, for caring for us. Now there is the epidemic. They still deliver aid supplies to us. After the motorcyclists delivered the supplies, volunteers gave them gifts and promised to help them get through the tough times. We did not expect to have business during the epidemic time. Thank you, Tzuji, for giving us the opportunity to deliver supplies. Thank you for giving us supplies. It helps us more or less. As the coronavirus pandemic continues to develop in the United States, an apartment fire displaced 36 households in Hayward, Northern California. Tzuji volunteers distributed cash cards and a drive through setup so the affected residents can maintain social distance while getting needed supplies. So can you open up the letter and in there, there should be a cash card. There we go. In fact, we brainstormed and came up with the solution. We thought it would not be good to hold the activity indoors. Then we thought we could have a drive through The fact that residents would not have to physically contact us, as they also have concerns. We should protect each other. They can stay in their cars while we hand them the supplies, including pamphlet, fabric mask, and cash cards. We hand it to them and explain everything to them. I hope to go home soon as I can. I don't like staying in hotels. We are afraid and we cannot sleep at night. Thank you very much. Gigi always help us. Thank you. In, in the folder. Yes. It's really unfortunate that we're going through a pandemic and then there's fire, you know. Mm -hmm. And my husband, is he has MS, so it, it's harder for me, it's harder for us. And you know, he's wheelchair dependent, and all our equipments are actually at home. So it's been difficult. We're just really looking forward to going back, but it's not safe yet. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Well, we have to pay the hotel. We don't know yet when we're going back to the condo. They don't want, and the food. That's a great help. 
Thank you very much for your organization. It means a lot to us for helping us because, you know, right now we're struggling to get financial help and thank you very much. Face masks have become an indispensable daily necessity as COVID-19 spread around the globe. A 70-year-old U.S. City volunteer, Annie Chang, in Los Angeles, led a cloth mask production team teaching sewing techniques around the neighboring communities. Moreover, city volunteers across the United States visit communities to hand out homemade masks, delivering love during these difficult times. As soon as the epidemic occurred, a Chiji volunteer, Annie Zhang, who is also a sewing teacher, cuts fabric and sews cloth masks all by herself. She also goes to different communities to teach residents how to sew cloth masks. A volunteer who is also a sewing expert expressed his interest in cutting the fabric for me, while some students are willing to help introduce people who are good at sewing. Ms. Guo, who operated a sewing factory before, joined the rank of making cloth masks. She can produce more than 900 pieces a day. After I woke up in the morning, if I have time, I will start making masks non-stop until half past nine at night. The mask making team of Chiji U.S. headquarters is temporarily established by this group of women. It gained a reputation for both quantity and quality. When people or even some of the staff saw this mask with Hello Kitty, they came to ask where they could buy this or if it was available on the internet. So this is a very popular product. Chiji volunteers in Washington, D.C. also brought the cloth masks to visit their labors in the nearby shopping area. Handmade? Nice. Nice. Yes. Feels comfortable. Yes. Very nice group of people that are walking around the community, uh, providing some uh, help in people to protect themselves during these times. Very good. Uh, Affected by the epidemic, the shopping area was empty. The compassion of volunteers was like a warm breeze. Matt, this is a handmade face mask. It's not selling, sorry. We're selling the left. But not the mask. <laughs> Receiving the cloth mask given by the volunteers happily, people have a good impression of Chiji and also a promise to go vegetarian together. In Silicon Valley, volunteers visited a fire station. You come together in large events or large crises to, to help each other and that is the path forward um, to getting through a lot of these trying times. Whether it was a forest fire or flood, they have had many experiences cooperating. This time, Chiji sent them masks, spreading love and care in difficult times. Chiji volunteers around the world are busy delivering epidemic prevention materials to those in need. With the assistance of city councillors, Canadian Chiji volunteers in Richmond Hill sent protective face shields to a long-term care centre, while Toronto chapter supported an intellectually disabled care home to protect the safety of frontline medical staff. There was a snowstorm in May, and Chiji volunteers in Richmond Hill were still rushing to deliver supplies under the cold wind. This batch of supplies was already the fourth, which was being sent to Mongchang Long-Term Care Center. The epidemic here is quite serious. Many residents have been diagnosed and nurses got infected too. We came to the care center here to donate medical supplies so that the frontline staff serving the seniors are safe and with peace of mind. I, on behalf of the community, pay tribute to Ziji with great sincerity. That over 74 percent of the coronavirus related deaths have been related to the patients or seniors that do reside in long-term care homes. So these protective face shields will be specifically for the medical personnel who will work in the centers. Being able to participate in this process and help with this initiative, I feel that this is a very meaningful thing to do. In North Toronto, Chiji volunteers were working non-stop and delivered the supplies by their own cars. Medical staff have long been waiting at the entrance with expectation and joy to receive the supplies. 
The place accommodates patients with mental retardation. From the beginning of this epidemic to now, there are already 40 residents who had a positive reaction to COVID-19. This time, the mass donation actually helped them a lot. They're expecting it for a long time, so today they're very happy. Thank you, Ziji, for your generosity. The entrance of the hospital was filled with encouraging words to cheer up medical personnel. Everyone faced a severe epidemic with love and mutual assistance. Everyone's contribution counts in our fight for the pandemic. Today, we travel to Kaohsiung, Taiwan to meet city volunteers who are working with opto, electronic and plastic manufacturers to produce face shields. So far, the team has assembled some 30,000 pieces for the frontline professionals. These are our sisters in Joying District, our partners in Joying District. This morning's volunteers all have to go back to work. Some of them will do it for half a day and some people do it in the afternoon. We do batches like this and get in touch with hospitals in many places. Such as Taipei and Zhanghua Christian Hospital and Huadian Taidong, we have helped everywhere, almost all of Taiwan. <laughs> the thickness of this plastic board is 0.25 centimeter. When it comes, the whole piece is covered with a film. We have to give them to the medical staff, so we need extra protection. After we attach the elastic tape, we do the buckles here. This is the long and short piece, and it was designed this way because everyone uses staples, but we are afraid that when they're holding it, their gloves will hook the staples and hurt their hands. When you put it on, this whole protective film tears off, and the whole face shield becomes transparent and can be reused. We give them for free, this is all free. Of course, part of the funding is from our boss, and some of it is from us sharing. This is because we are all Tsuji people. There are many Tsuji brothers and sisters who also donated their love and compassion. This origin was SARS 17 years ago. At that time, we saw medical staff at Taipei Heping Hospital on TV and news that a young doctor died like this. I felt that if it was my son, I would be very sad, so we used this empathy. Just right here is a related company in this industry. He's making a photoelectric board marker, and they can easily make this plastic sheet. I told him we want to do it bit by bit. We don't worry about expanding too much. But if we can make it bit by bit, we're not so smart. But we just needed this donation and suddenly we made 30,000 pieces. The first one we saw was the one that produced PC board. And the second machine is a semi-automatic machine, which is a straight cutting machine that possesses the form. Colleges are also very willing to cooperate because everyone knows that this is for the sake of old Taiwan. It's for the medical staff to use. For example, this guy you just saw didn't come out last time, so he also took advantage of the holidays to come out to help.
Suzhou Myanmar office recently prepared full staff for Tapu Khan village in the remote areas of Yangon region. Every family received 48 kilograms of rice and 2 liters of cooking oil. When volunteers visited the families, they also promoted vegetarianism and the rice bamboo bank, saving a handful of rice every day for other families in need. Almost every family were in support of this good cause. It is very hot in Myanmar in April and May. Suji volunteers in Yangon go to a village to deliver rice. Their car stirred up a lot of dust into the air and the volunteers and their bags are covered in dust, but they must take the trip. It took us about three to four hours one way to reach their village. Our help to them was limited, but when I saw the villagers were so happy to see us, how toiling we were, and coming here, we would feel this was nothing. The epidemic has forced villagers unable to leave home to work. Tsuji Myanmar office is conducting a relief plan by giving rice and cooking oil to every family. Those are mute granddaughters cannot breastfeed her baby because she has been malnourished for a long time. The volunteers also give them milk powder. We use milk powder cans to hold rice, and we eat four cans of rice for every meal. Now we only have four cans of rice left at home. Now you are here so we can eat rice in a large bag and in good quality. The rice on Akiti has home does not have much rice left, so the rice from Tsuji can help her family at last. Before she cooks, she also saves a handful of rice to help people. When I save rice, I pray that suffering people are safe and my family is healthy. This is how I pray every time I save rice. I also meditate and cultivate often, so your appearance makes me want to practice good deeds, so I also save rice and also money. Villagers in Myanmar are usually poor. Although they often do not have food to eat, they are willing to save a handful of rice every day to expand their love. In Haikou City, Hainan Province in China, the civilian-founded Fuxi School is facing financial burden due to the epidemic and is about to undergo relocation. Having once visited Tsuji in Taiwan, the school founder invited Tsuji volunteers to collect the recyclable materials from the old school building, putting resources into good use. The old chairs and desk are about to be replaced. Fuxi School informed Tsuji volunteers to come recycle them. The teacher's podium is about to be disposed and it's a bit broken, so we're not taking it away. There's aluminum, iron and some screws in it, and we'll take them all out. These outdated newspapers and books can be recycled and reused. The school founder visited Siji in Taiwan and saw ways to cherish resources. We thought of Chiji Frontiers and I trusted handing these to Chiji. They will use this to do the right thing, so I'm especially comforted. There are a variety of recycled resources on campus. Experienced recycling volunteers tore the items apart and sorted them instantly. There were also volunteers collecting the garbage right afterward. We recycle and clean at the same time, so it's very clean and fast. The speed is fast and the work is neat. The sixth floor school building saw volunteers work day and night for eight consecutive days. We do floor after floor, and the more we do, the more work we find to do. We are blessed that we got so many items given to use to recycle, and we can recover so many resources. For this, we are very glad. I feel a bit tired, my legs are a bit sore, but I slept well once I return home. <laughs> <laughs> volunteers prepared their own lunch and took a break from their work. Tsuji volunteers and school faculty worked together to ready the school to move to a new address. It's really a great amount of resources, whether it's to dispose the copper, aluminium or iron. The sister have been working since 9 o'clock in the morning till the moon came out now. It's a heavy workload. <laughs> they only care about recycling, and none of them said they were tired. Also, no one would say that I'm exhausted and want to sit down and rest. No one said that. The 
COVID-19 pandemic has been a challenge to the school's operation, but the founder valued each item and sought to recycle it to better protect the earth. Hmm. Our museum special series is taking us to Taichung today, visiting the Museum of Fiber Arts that opened in 2018. Through exhibitions, guided tours and DIY courses, it is introducing fiber and arts to the public. In history or in modern days, fiber is to be found in our daily lives. Plain fiber refers to short plate articles, bamboo weaving and rattan weaving. In fact, we are familiar with them. Our animal fiber refers to silk, wool and rabbit's hair. There is also regenerated fiber and functional fiber. From tradition to the future, the lavish party's exhibit speaks of fiber culture. On the wall are introduction of all kinds of fiber, then there's further explanation. Different fiber has different texture. Children can understand the characteristic fiber. Where does the material come from? To learn about different kinds of fiber, there are DIY classes. Through DIY, children's thinking will be stimulated. There is unlimited space to his imagination. With fiber, fashion, and green art as developmental goals, Da Yuan Elementary School holds its graduation exhibit. On clothes with vegetable dye, we use acrylic paint, then we press it, and these patterns will show up. Fiber is closely related to life, crossing the fine arts and art world. Now I'm going to show the stitching skill, which is considered abstract. With a needle and stitches, 64-year-old Liu Qianshao is skillful in all kinds of embroidery. There are abundant flowers in a pine tree stitched with seven skills. Dedicated to creative art for more than 40 years, Liu is strict in her teaching, as she has her persistence in artwork. My students teach for five hours, but the next day I cut apart his work. I did not know he has worked on it for so long, but to me the work was not acceptable. When the student's work is imperfect, Liu will ask them to redo the work. She's laying the student's foundation in artwork. The museum has a collection of artworks as a way of passing down the art. It is hoped that more people will enter the world of fiber arts. Chilitas and volunteers prepared food, preparation materials and monetary aid to two senior homes to help them overcome the pandemic. Thank you for joining us and see you next time.